Entering data into an attribute table, this is something that you could just simply type in, but sometimes when entering data, maybe from a um, mobile unit, like a GPS or a mobile device, you just want to give the person inputting the data some choices. And so that's why we use domains. So one type of domain is a coded domain. And this might be something that as the user is entering data, as a description for the type of tree they're seeing, they might just have a drop-down menu that has a couple of choices on it, like um, coniferous or deciduous, and they get to choose one of those, but they can't type in their own. So um, this can be helpful because it can just um, eliminate things like typographical errors or people putting in values that couldn't possibly be the case. So sometimes we put in these coded domains where we just give the users a choice from a drop-down menu. Other times we have domain ranges, and that might be just for the values that can be specified. For example, um, um, if we were looking at a, a percentage field, what percent of the area is covered by vegetation? That value would have to be somewhere between zero and 100. So if someone accidentally typed in 200, um, it, would, it would not allow them to put in that value because it's too high. And although this one, this, this um, coded domain, um, for deciduous and coniferous is very particular. We could have one such as um, good, fair, and poor, which could apply to a lot of different situations. So here's some examples of some, uh, some domains here. And um, in each of these things, the, the condition class, once again, could be good, fair, or poor. The line category, if someone's putting in what they're seeing, could be a sidewalk, a street, a trail, a power line, or other. And um, a lot of times we do include these others in case it's something that is, um, that is not indicated by one of the other choices. And um, by setting up such coded domains, it makes it easy for the um, person collecting the data to select something and just basically it reduces typing time, it um, decreases the data entry er errors, it does all sorts of good things like that. So um, in creating these domains, they're created for the geodatabase rather than for one feature class within the, within the geodatabase so that they can be reused for many fields. Um, they're given field types that must match the field type to which they are assigned. So in this example here, the field type for the symbol type is text, and um, that's what the field type for the, um, for the um, attribute table would also have to be. And uh, and also these can be split and merged as you need for future use. Once you've, uh, once you've made this domain, then you can assign it to various um, things within the attribute table. So um, in this example, we're in the field view and we're looking at this uh, parcel type domain that we're seeing here. That's assigned to the building type field in the buildings feature class. And this is associated in this case with a data type of text, and so that has to match. And then um, the domain could be potentially reused. The same building type could be reused in other, um, in other feature classes within the same geodatabase. So this, these domains are one thing that we can enter into something that's called a schema. So the schema is... Um, basically the structure of the table, which includes its definitions, its domains, its um, lengths, and all those other sorts of things, as we're seeing here. So in this example here in the schema, we're once again seeing the building type, which is a um, type text. It has a domain, which is parcel type, so they'll have a nice drop down to, to, to indicate what type, parcel type they need, and we can see the length here. The address is text and has a uh, length of 50. And then for some of these values here, um, we might know in, ahead of time that this data is being collected in Austin, Texas. So we can automatically set the default for the city to be Austin and the default to be Texas. If we have one parcel type that occurs much more often than other parcel types, and we want to try to save the person entering the data some more typing, we could put in that most common parcel type as the default. But the only um, warning there would be sometimes people might just take the default without um, dropping down the entire drop down menu and seeing what their other options are within the schema. So the schema can be um, can be used for this sort of application and then it can be um, saved as a template so that if you were creating a new one you would be able to use it for that as well.